Wow, home prices could fall in 183 overvalued markets if the housing affordability continues. This is according to new data that's been mapped out by Moody's Analytics. So give me a thumbs up if you're ready to dive in. So what's really going on? It's a balancing act. Since real estate is regional, what happens in one part of the nation does not necessarily happen in another part of the nation. Now, this is not straight across the board, but in some areas of the nation, we're going to see some dropping home prices. And there's some new data that's very interesting that I want to go ahead and share with you. In some areas of the nation, they're going to be winners and they're gonna to continue to see demand and price appreciation in some pockets. But on the other hand, there are some areas of the nation that are gonna be losers and see the values actually going down. So where and what towns are we gonna see values drop? Home prices in bubbly markets like Phoenix, Boise, and Las Vegas are already seeing prices begin to fall. But Housing prices in the U.S. will shift somewhere between an increase, yes, you heard me right, of up to 3% plus in the high demand areas, all the way down to the negative 5% to 25% in those overpriced areas. Now, some areas of the nation will not do as well as other areas that are in demand. Now, this map from Fortune Magazine shows that 183 of the top 413 top housing markets that are overvalued by more than 25% and which some believe could translate into a decline in home prices by as much as 20%. Now, if this home slump in housing sales continues in those areas, that'll probably happen. So where are homes overpriced and where are they slumping? And where are homes underpriced? Where are people moving to? Where are people going that they continue to move to? And it may not be exactly where you think it is. Now, according to this new report, states of Florida and Nevada are looking overvalued, but not all states are equal either. For instance, states like South Carolina, this is according to the Moody's financial report, you see where Charleston and Hilton Head are overvalued. Yet on the other hand, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina area is undervalued. Now it's the same state, three towns, they're all close to each other, yet three completely different outcomes. So why, why is this happening? Well, many retiring places with uh, low taxes, people are moving to uh, low cost of living. And of course the lure of the beach and ocean is not going away. But as I said, real estate is hyper local. It can be even a neighborhood. So one area can be doing well while the other area is losing. Now, according to home buyer demographics reports, one area will be growing in 2023 and the other area isn't. Now, Moody's financial uh, chief economist, Mark Zandi, told Fortune magazine that home prices would either stay the same or drop around 5%. But in areas that are much higher overvaluations, such as Boise, Idaho, and Flagstaff, Arizona, these valuations are 72% and 60% in these areas, and they could see some steep declines. Now, according to the New York Post, Moody's estimate of prices declining is an average of 5% to 20% and in many big cities. So if the recession continues to track with the estimates from these financial agencies, you could see that. Here's another report. Fitch ratings, estimated prices falling by about 15% in overvalued parts of the nation. And the economist, Robert Schiller, he, this is the guy who predicted the 2008 housing crash, estimates the decline to be around 10%, this report said. Now, the estimates come to us as the U.S. housing market is experiencing our sixth straight month of slowing sales, and that's the lowest level since 2020. Now, the National Association of Realtors reported in August 18th that existing home sales dipped 5.9% from June and 20.1% compared to the last year. Why? Well, much of this was caused by the impact of higher mortgage rates. But if you look at this map, I've got to show you this map of the facts. There's one very interesting port point, and that is that many areas of the nation have not been affected and are not seeing prices drop. Why? 
This is mainly because these areas did not see the crazy price appreciation or because these towns are where people want to be. It's where people want to move. Now, the national housing inventory that increased in July 4.8% over June, with more than 1.3 million available units and properties staying on the market for about 14 days. The fewer number of days since the organization has been tracking this since 2011. Now, the median price of existing homes in July nationally was $403,800. That is a 10.8% increase from July 2021, when the median price was $364,600. So think about it. Even though prices dropped, they're still higher than last year at this time. Is that a housing crash? No, it's called crazy inflation. So is this a housing recession? Yes, if you look at the numbers of home sales and the number of new homes that are being built, those numbers are down. But it's not happening across the board. It's not happening in every state and it's not happening in every town. So if you watch this all the way to the end, I have several new updated reports that I really wanna share with you. Now here's one. It may not be what you wanna hear, but it's gonna be the truth and these are the facts. Nearly 40% of homes listed in the nation are still commanding full list price. Inventory still remains pretty tight and inflation is still prevalent. But this is not a recession in home prices, it's a balancing act. So I've got a question. Did some home sellers overprice their houses? 100% yes. But just because your house is worth 500,000 doesn't mean that you can slap a million dollar price tag on it. Those days are well gone. Now the number of first time home buyers has also dropped from 30% in June to 29% in July. So what is really going on? It's a balancing act. By now, most homeowners have heard the news that the market has shifted. Well, that is true. It's an unusual story, but it's more complex than that because if you look at the first quarter of 2022, sellers had all the cards. Now, sellers are handing them back one by one. As you already know, financial markets tend to run by two emotions. It's either fear or greed. Now, understandably, greed drove the market in the first quarter and actually it did last year as well. Now, if you listen to the news, it's today, it's all about fear. Likely, too many people remember the mess of 2008 and fear that this is gonna be a repeat. Therefore, we're officially getting back to a balanced market, not in the hands of sellers or not in the hands of buyers. So why is all the hand wringing? It is, it's a balanced market. Isn't that a dream come true? A balanced market favors neither the seller nor the buyer. So there's first thing to realize is that the last time we were in a balanced market was 2015. Now I've been in real estate for the last 36 years. Yet many new real estate agents have never seen what a balanced market even looks like. Further, after seven years of the abnormal, it starts to feel normal. Additionally, not all areas, not all price points are moving in sync and at the same time, as I showed you in the map. So yes, there is a shift, but lack of consistency in all areas and all price points creates further uncertainty and the moving targets are hard to precisely pin down, especially while they're in flux. So what is known? Well, recently the showing time market stats examined that location is affected relative strength or weakness of the market. And so is the price point. Now here's the case in point. The entire MLS in the Coastal Carolina Association of Realtors analyzed the changes in the average sales price, price per square foot, and the median sales price. So August 2022, the average closed transaction price was $314,485. Much more affordable compared to the national average of $403,800. So not shockingly, the low end and the high end fared the best. The high end of the market is not interest rate sensitive. 
The low end of the market, on the other hand, simply has restricted supply and very little new supply of homes in these lower price points are created. So proving once again that the housing is very neighborhood and price specific. So what do you know? What should you know? Well, you should know that sellers have to take something away from this. And here's a few points. Number one, if you sell now, today's value is still above the same time last year. Number two, this market is rebalancing. Yes, it's shifting, but the rate of decline is not crashing. So what will future values look like? No one can predict, but C.1 for today's answer. Number three, supply and demand is determined by who holds the strength in the negotiations. Now, answer is specific areas and specific price points. It's all relative. To get hyper-specific when evaluating your home, it is a moving target. And number four, once again, we're back to where we were. If you really want the best results, you need to get a good real estate agent. The peak of the market, you could sell your house and you could do no wrong. You know, there were multiple offers. Things were selling in a few days. Uh, homes were selling at 93.3% of all homes. They got sold. Just put it on the market. But today, that number is now 70.4. So the difference between selling now and not selling now has swung back to the agent that you choose, their skill in their marketing and their knowledge. So we're getting back to the land of normal, although it may not feel like normal. It will take a little bit of time for everyone to really absorb the fact, but in many parts of the nation, this market will settle into a much overdue correction. In other parts of the nation, people will continue to migrate and they're gonna to go to those areas. So as always, we keep our friends and our clients aware of these challenges in the changing market. Jerry Pincus Real Estate Experts, we're here to inform. You have questions, we have answers. I just want you to know that I truly appreciate you. And as you know, there's over a thousand super helpful videos here on this channel. So if you subscribed, I will see you in the next video. Thanks again. Yeah.